Hey, good morning, Kanye. I just told you who I thought I was. A guy. You ain't got the answer, Sway. Give us three things that are hairy. Balls, balls, balls. Believe it or not, we're coming up on the one year anniversary of my every Taylor Swift album video. That video did so well, man. Like, I'm really convinced that I'm never gonna have a video do that well again. This must be what it feels like to peak in high school. All drats. I tried to think of different ways that we could celebrate that anniversary together, you know, me and my subscribers. I figured maybe we could dive into like an older Taylor Swift album that I haven't made a reaction to. Maybe I could try to make an every Taylor Swift song tier list again. But after confidently weighing all my options, I somehow landed on making an every album video for her arch nemesis. I don't know how we got here, but we're here, so yeah. Born Kanye Omari West, now legally identified as just Ye, is simultaneously the most controversial and one of the most highly regarded artists of the 21st century. I mean, five to 10 years ago, pre-divorce Kanye had pop culture in a chokehold. Whenever he dropped an album, everybody loved it. Whatever he wore, everyone wanted to wear. Whether that was Jordan 1s or Yeezy 350s, he even made bees popular. The fucking father of three on a Costco run sevens. Now I'm aware that making a video on Kanye West is practically a death sentence for my channel. At least 90% of my subscribers are Swifties, and the other 10% probably at least aren't anti-Semitists. I hope Semitists a word. Racist, Semitist. I don't know. But one of my hopes for the future of this channel is to not just cover pop music. I know, crazy. And Kanye West somehow feels like both the best and worst place to start. So the plan for today's video is to listen to every single Kanye West album, effectively rank, review, and synopsize every album, and lastly, try to somehow make a dent into uncovering the enigma that is Kanye West. To the Swifties watching this video, I just want to say I'm still an ally, alright? I'm just diversifying my stock portfolio. Taylor Swift is still my glorious queen, but this is Kanye West we're talking about, and I don't want to miss out on some of the best music from the past 20 years because of what? Because I'm a Swifty? I don't think so. I don't think so. The wife got a big butt, and I just see our life becoming more and more and more like the Incredibles until we can finally fly. Please don't unsubscribe. Before we get into this, I do want to clarify that I obviously do not support Kanye West with any of the anti-Semitic or otherwise offensive things he said in recent years. I know that probably goes without saying for a lot of people, but I just wanted to clarify it here. You know, I know there's still probably going to be one person that says, How could you make a video supporting that devil of a human being? Spoiler alert, I'm probably gonna say a lot of good things about his music in this video, and I might even squeeze in a few good things about him, but I think that's okay. Because saying something good about someone or a few things good about someone does not mean you support everything they do. Sometimes it really just is a compliment and nothing more than that. Anyways, that's all I'm gonna say regarding the 45 ton elephant in the room. I just didn't want this video to feel like I was dancing around it the whole time, but I'm not here to judge or shame or distinguish between good or bad. You know, I'm not Michael from The Good Place in season one at least. But I am a small YouTuber with a four day weekend coming up. So here we are people. Ye was born June 8th, 1977 in Chicago, Illinois. He started off in the music industry as a beatsmith for artists like Alicia Keys, Ludacris, and the big one is obviously Mr. Sean Corey Carter himself, Jay-Z. Where could he have possibly gotten Jay-Z from? I thought his government name would be something like Jason Ziegel, you know? But anyways, I guess one day he just decided that he wanted to be on the other side of the glass. Cut to today, he's one of the biggest artists of all time. As of October 23, Kanye West has released 10 studio album. The College Dropout, Late Registration, Graduation, 808s and Heartbreak, My Beautiful Dark Toasted Fantasy, Yeezus, Life of Pablo, Yay, which I guess is an album even though it only has seven songs, Jesus is King, and Donda, 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 Donda. He also has two collaborative albums, Watch the Throne and Kitsy Ghost, with Jay-Z and Kid Cudi respectively, for a total of 12 projects that I'll be listening to today and covering in order of release. All of these albums add up to a total of 184 tracks and about 696 minutes or 11 hours and 36 minutes of music and interludes and stuff sound of sound which is a lot but still doesn't beat out the 12 plus hours for my glorious blonde amazonian goddess uh, i wrote this script at like 2 a.m please forgive me and please like this video and subscribe at 25k subs i'll do something i, I don't know what yet because we're pretty far away from that milestone but it'll be good yo chief they can't stop me from rapping, can they? Can they hop? I listen to College Dropout. 
is so fire, man. Like, I completely forgot how good this album is. Back in the day, this was like my favorite Kanye album because, well, honestly, it was the only one I ever listened from start to finish, but this is like a really fun vibe. Two big disclaimers that I want to make before starting this whole album recap process. The first one is I have a cold, so I don't know if you could really hear in my voice, but I might not be as enthusiastic and as animated just because I I I'm sick. <coughs> Boo hoo. And the second big disclaimer is that I've never reviewed hip hop before. So, if I'm being honest, I can't imagine that I'll be that good at it. Albums like Kanye's are just a whole new beast when it comes to reviewing them and recapping them and analyzing them compared to the stuff that we usually cover on this channel, which is basically all pop music. But I'm not going into this video completely blind. I am a little bit familiar with Kanye's music and I'm gonna do my best to do each of these albums justice. And you guys can just let me know if I missed anything in the comments. Politely though, please. <coughs> <coughs> oh, what a weird sound to make after a cough. Okay, like I said earlier, Kanye was already a very successful producer and beatsmith before ever making music of his own. And I think the fact that he's sort of already been around the block really shows with this first album. Most of the time when it comes to debut projects, there's a bit of a learning curve, you know, with the artists trying to figure out what their sound is and the best way to tackle it. But Kanye comes out swinging with this one. So much confidence. I've never seen an artist have this much confidence on a debut project ever. And that really pays off because it doesn't ever feel like he doesn't know what he's doing. And it's just so clear to me how serious he's taking his music while still having fun with it and not being too scared to try new things. Exhibit A, in 2002, Kanye West was in a very serious and very tragic car accident. He went through surgeries and ended up having his mouth wired shut. And what does this man do? Does he rest sitting on his couch all day drinking soup and watching The Sopranos like a normal person? Of course not. Kanye's not a normal person. My man hits the fucking stew and makes this banger, one of the best songs on the album. And he rapped the entire thing with his mouth wired shut. I can't even talk with my mouth wired shut. This is what I sound like. Like, can you imagine, bro? Like, who does that? It's actually insane. And that is the biggest standout factor to call dropout, in my opinion, is no matter how deep the album goes with its themes and its topics, it just never takes itself too seriously to the point of it feeling like sad or depressing. Jesus Walks is another song on this album that I really like, you know, not to get too personal into like, you know, my religious background, but it, it's a subject I can relate to. The song challenges the stigma behind religious discussion in modern music, which is a very serious topic, right? But he does it in a way that's like kind of fire. Like it's a fucking banger. Oh shit, bro. Song plays one of these. You know what the Midwest is, young and restless. Just a really fun song. And the album definitely touches on like a bunch of different topics that are kind of more serious and not as like fun, but he makes it fun and makes it easily digestible. Another example and the last song that I'll single out on this album is We Don't Care. The hook literally has kids singing about drugs, which is like insane, like an insane move. But here's my personal theory. When you look at the lyrics, Kanye talks about people that, you know, were brought up in inner cities and didn't have many opportunities and were forced to resort to drug dealing because it's just the only way that they could get by. And I know that the choice of having kids sing the hook drug dealing just to get high, blah, 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 is bold. It's really bold, but I personally think it's supposed to speak about how ingrained some of those standards are in those communities, you know, in inner cities. So much so that the kids may as well sing songs like this because they're essentially destined to follow in those footsteps. There's reason behind it, you know. This is the earlier phases of Kanye's career where his craziness made sense. To summarize, I think this album is a very cohesive listen and there's just like a very specific feel that this album has that I feel like you don't get from later Kanye. You know, less tech sounds, more warm drums. I don't really know the word to describe that, but yeah. Here are my top five songs. I'll give you a second to look at those and yeah. Great album. I really enjoyed it. Now I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke. Morning losers. Last night I listened to late registration. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. I'm sorry. I'm so tired. I don't want to go to class. <laughs> In a lot of ways, this album for me just felt like more of College Dropout. Even though it is conceptually different and touches on different topics, I feel like it does the same tricks as College Dropout in like a similar style. Kind of like saying different things in the same font. You know what I mean? There's this running gag of the interludes on this album where it's like a, a frat called Broke Five Broke and the whole joke is that they don't have money but they buy like expensive stuff to like make it look like they have money but they really don't. And again, these are just more signs that show that he's taking this stuff very seriously. When you listen to these songs, they're great. Touch the Sky, Gold Digger is probably my favorite Kanye song ever but he's having fun with it and I think he's committing to the bit and I really like that. And I believe that's all the notes that I have on this album. Um, it's definitely really good, but I feel like because I listened to it so closely to College Dropout, they kind of blend it together a little bit in terms of like my general thoughts on them. Cause I think they do the same things well. I might say that this album has higher highs because I think the hits on this one are really good, but I don't know. It's honestly a toss up. I don't really know which one I like more. Oh yeah, and here's my top five songs. Just whatever, yeah, just look at it. Work it, make it, do it, makes us all up in a bad. 
Faster, stronger. Holy shit, I hate the gym. I hate the gym so much. But in other news, I listened to Graduation. That shit is a fucking banger. I actually forgot how many hits were on that album. We've arrived to the final installment of the Kanye Stuffed Bear Trilogy. I guess is what I'll call it. And this one is pretty clearly the most impressive to me. It's probably my favorite of the three. There's a streak of songs from like Stronger to Flashing Lights where I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, wow, this is actually insane. If I'm being honest, I don't recall there being much narrative cohesion to the album, but it doesn't really matter because literally every single one of these songs fucking hits. It's just a lot more out there tonally, you know? If you look at the covers, the first two have that like browns, reds, yellows, oranges, you know, warmer, muted, bodily colors that is such a weird way of putting it but you get what i mean but then graduation has like purple the bear has like a jetpack or some shit you know like it's kind of out there and that visual difference is a really good representation of i think the change that this album takes my biggest takeaway from this album as a relatively newer hip-hop listener is the actual art and expertise behind a really good sample like i feel like a bad sample will basically just steal the hook of another song and put it on theirs. But a good one will take it, you know, maybe speed it up, slow it down, modify it, and then use that as the foundation of their song and then build off of it, right? Really recent popular sample, First Class by Jack Harlow. Bad, because he literally just talks in between the original lyrics. Like, what is that? That's kind of ass, bro. All right, I won't lie, man. Like, if that song comes on at a party, I might throw some ass, you know, like just a little bit, I don't know. But compare that to Stronger, which is one of my favorite songs on the album. It's a really popular sample, too, of that one Daft Punk song. I forget what it's called. But Kanye slows it down, breaks it up, almost turns it into, like, a little bit of a riff. You know, it sounds like it's its own instrument. And then he comes in with the, na, 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 don't kill me, and only make me stronger. It ends up making the song feel like its own thing. Whereas Jack Harlow is just, like, kind of riding along with the original one. I hope that made sense, but yeah, that's my take. It's just more layers, making everything feel more deep. Here are my top five songs, all bangers. I only listened to this album like twice, so definitely not enough to give it a real assessment, but it's gotta be like at least a nine. I don't know, it's really good. On lonely nights I start to fade. Happy Saturday. I listened to 808s and Heartbreak. Very different than the other three. I definitely enjoyed the turn that this album took. You know, Graduation was such an extravaganza. It was so big. 808s is like pulling everything back, much more intimate, much more self-contained, but still being relatively entertaining. You know, it doesn't ever drag. The beats are mostly all electronic, hence the name 808s and Heartbreak. And thematically, it touches on a lot more sadder, serious stuff, you know, loss, heartbreak, hence the name 808s and Heartbreak. My favorite song on this one was probably Heartless. It's just such a great hook. You know, and I really love the auto tune on his voice too. And the whole album really, you know, Kanye is not an artist that I typically see as someone that uses a lot of auto tune, but it's very apparent on this album. And I think it's done pretty tastefully. It makes his voice feel more in line with the rest of the electronic instrumentals and shit. It honestly makes it feel like colder, more cutthroat. I hate to say it, but it's kind of genius because Kanye's bringing some really emotional deliveries in these songs, but no matter how emotional they feel, it's all passed through this auto tune, which takes away a lot of that warmth. And I feel like that's meant to symbolize him feeling feeling conformed or feeling confined to keep going with the flow, you know, getting in line with everything else that's happening when he really just wants to have an emotional moment. He really wants to express himself on a deeper level. That is also something that I kind of pulled out of my butt, but I feel like it makes sense. And I really like this album. So far, no misses. Um, we'll start to see that that is kind of a trend for Kanye West. He makes really good music. I wouldn't say that this album is my favorite though, just cause I feel like when you talk about Kanye, this like simpler, you know, stylized production isn't really what I always think about, you know? I think about the really extravagant, in your face, crazy twists and turns. So it's just not the best representation of his, I guess, thing, like what he does. No one man should have all that power. <laughs> we heated up, boys, all right? We heated up. I'm pretty sure a lot of people consider this to be Kanye's best album. And I definitely agree that it's one of his best. In a lot of ways, it does feel like Kanye at his best, you know, doing his thing. He, he, it feels like he's in the zone for the entire album. The production on each song is so out there and so vastly different from one another. Another thing I wanna point out is this album has a lot of features on it. So much so that sometimes you forget that you're listening to a Kanye West album just because there's so many other artists that are coming in and out, which I honestly think is a really good thing. I love it because it feels like his music and his art is becoming bigger than himself. And it's true, you know, the scale of this album feels huge. So many bangers, so much emotional variety with one connecting thread. 
Kanye West. And I love the title, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, because that's what it feels like, you know? It hits so many different beats, from anthems like Power and All the Lights that make you just want to lose your shit, to more traditional hip-hop beats, you know, like Monster, where it's a little slower, you know, the production isn't as in your face, but it still goes in, to a sadder, intimate moment, like Runaway. It's abstract, it's eccentric, it's all over the place. But when you zoom out, as a whole, the album feels like a very orchestrated and meticulous body of work. When everything is crazy, nothing is, right? Like so many of these songs crank everything up to 10 that once your expectations have been adjusted, you're really just effortlessly cruising through the rest of the album. And by the end, it feels like it was all a fever dream. I do want to highlight one song on this album, and that's Runaway. I think it's supposed to be his sort of response song to the 2009 VMAs incident. I really like it. You know, it's a very beautiful song. Um, it does kind of feel like a backhanded apology, but it's also really genuine and super sad. You know, Kanye understands that he's an asshole, and he understands that the public has been putting up with his shit for way too long, as the lyric says. But I also feel like he's acknowledging that just a simple apology would be fake. It wouldn't mean anything because it's about his continued behavior. So he's telling people, run away as fast as you can. You know, I'm a monster. Get away from me. And with that long sort of interlude of just the instrumentals where Kanye's not saying anything, it feels like Kanye's alone now. And... You might fucking cry. I'm not gonna lie. It's really beautiful. Good stuff, Mr. West. Very good stuff. Um, so yeah, at least that's how I interpret the song. It could also just be a, a generic heartbreak song, but I'm pretty sure that's like the general belief is that it's about that incident. Here's my top five. There's just so many slapperuskis on this album, man, okay? But this right here, this is the dream team. Definitely a good gateway album for new listeners to Kanye. I guess the only problem with that would be you don't want to start at the top because then it's just going to go down in quality, you know? But like I said earlier, this album very much is Kanye at his best, doing what he does best. It's like his red. I don't remember how clear I was with my experience with hip hop in this video so far. So I'll explain a little bit right now. You know, I like the really popular artists, you know, the Travis Scott's, the Kendrick Lamar's, uh, Kanye, whenever they drop, I'll listen. That said, who doesn't know Jay-Z, man? He's my favorite character in How I Met Your Mother. And I think so much of this album thrives off of... Is it weird to say chemistry between Jay-Z and Kanye when they rap? Like, I love the songs where they each have their own verses, their own times to shine. But I fucking adore when they go bar for bar, you know, trading blows like Cap and Bucky in Civil War. Just completely matching each other's energy and never stepping on each other's toes. I would say thematically, they do equal parts flexing and talking about their upbringing and some of the things they've learned, but all in a relatively fun manner. You know, the energy of this album is really high and that's one of my favorite parts about it. On top of that, the production is super distinct and super stylized. This idea of them being hip hop royalty and then basing the tone of this album off of that is just so sick. You know, there's a mix of orchestral, old timey church, E type sounds and 808s and buzzy synths. It's like perfectly conjoining modern music with like a really old royalty, like King Arthur sound, you know? I'd also like to point out the song Ham because it is literally a fucking banger. Literally one of the best experiences of my life is listening to that song. There's like a fucking whole ass orchestra in it and opera singers. Like, what the fuck? Bro, that's amazing. I hate to be basic. You guys know what my favorite song is, okay? You guys know. Elevated Acquaintances based out of the capital of France, all right? It's just a banger. I know it's overplayed. I don't care. Jesus kind of feels like 808s and Heartbreak 2, in a way. Like a more updated spin on it, while also just representing a different stage in Kanye's life. You know, before he was a little bit younger in the music scene and heartbroken. And now he's a lot more vetted and even more self-absorbed. I definitely like Jesus a lot more than 808s and Heartbreak. I just feel like it commits more to the bit. You know, like everything about the production is just much more in your face. 808s had much clearer emotional sentiment to it. So it sometimes felt like the tech sound was, you know, not the priority, which is fine. You know, I love sad shit, but Yeezus has some fucking bangers. All right, new slaves, no slaves. Here's my top five. It's a pretty short album, but I do kind of like that for stuff like this that is so stylized because the longer an album is, the looser its cohesive themes and sounds become. But Yeezus is a tight 10 songs, comes in, does its thing, and comes out. The only reason I wouldn't call it one of my favorites, even though there's some fucking bangers on it, is that... <sighs> I'm not like a crazy fan of Kanye's whole I am a god shtick. Like the title is Yeezy and Jesus together, 
He's saying he is Jesus. I get why people enjoy it. I know it's not supposed to be taken too seriously. You know, he's just flexing. He, he's done a lot with his career. He can flex a little bit. That's fine. It's just a little much for me sometimes. I don't know. And I feel like Kanye having that perspective really just ushered in that whole era of pop culture where just everyone was flexing all the time, even when they're not rich. And it just ends up reminding me of high school. And God knows I don't want to remember that. But in a lot of ways, this album does also encapsulate what Kanye is known for. It's polarizing, but it's also him just being unapologetically himself. I'd imagine that this one is probably a cult classic for a lot of diehard Kanye fans. But for me, I think he has better ones. It's just my opinion. I just wanted you to know. The results are in. Life of Pablo. Probably my favorite. Such an easy listen the entire time while still feeling really like abstract and interesting. Okay, 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 okay. This, all right, this right here. This is the chosen one. The boy who lived, the girl on fire, the last son of Krypton, all of them bow down at the sight of whoever these butt cheeks belong to. And I'm sure this is a little bit of a hot take, you know? In a lot of ways, Life of Pablo is kind of a mess. But that's kind of why I love it. You know, it's so crazy and so all over the place that it feels like a big party where everyone's invited. The first few songs are fantastic, in my opinion. They hit so many different beats, the twists and turns catch you off guard. It's fucking insane, bro. Father Stretch My Hands. Like, I've become desensitized to that song since, cause, just because I know it so well, but the first listen, bro, the first fucking listen to that song, are you fucking kidding? Everyone, everyone knows. Everyone knows what I'm talking about right now. It's fucking insane. And yeah, these first four songs, peak Kanye. Let me explain. Obviously, I am in full support of Taylor Swift in the 2016 situation. I genuinely don't see how you can't be. Everything about the way Kanye handled that situation was just wrong and just shitty. I mean, look at the way he's telling her in the video. Tell me it doesn't look like you're watching a kid fess up to doing something bad to their mom. Jimmy, did you eat another cookie without telling me? Yes, it might have happened. Extending that analogy further, Kanye already made the song. And it's like, yeah, it's a nice gesture on paper to say like, Hey, I'm saying these things about you. But what's she gonna do? Make him pull trigger and spit the cookie back out? No, obviously not. He shouldn't have eaten the cookie in the first place. I genuinely don't see how you could support Kanye in that situation. Um, It's just a big dick move on his part. Just a colossal, massive, schlong move. But it's an honest shame that there's all that social context to this song because... I'm just gonna say it, it's one of the best made songs on the album. The beat is just so sick, bro, with the And the Rihanna feature too? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Swifty community. But it's a banger! 20 songs and an hour and six minutes. Um, it is pretty long, which I don't really mind. You know, it's fine. I know I just said that I liked that the other album was short but I don't mind that this one's long. The entire thing feels like this gradual descent into a mental breakdown. Um, which is honestly kind of hard to listen to like those last few songs I don't know if I could listen to those again. It's just so vulnerable and so real You know clearly Kanye is not in a good place or was not in a good place when making this album And taking into account that this album came out in February of 2016 and he checked into a mental hospital in November of 2016 It just gives those moments so much more weight to it And this is where I hit kind of a, a weird crossroads, you know Because I really like the fun moments of this album But I feel like it hits a certain level of it being like so serious that it is genuinely hard to listen to But Waves, Famous, Father Stretch My Hands, Ultralight Beam the highs of this album, in my opinion, are some of Kanye's best work ever. No More Parties in LA, genuinely the best thing ever. Like, ever. It goes, God, you know, shouts out to my boy. Hot Pockets, because they're so cheap, so efficient, it's literally like a dollar and change for a meal. No More Parties in LA. And then after that, you could put all my loved ones and all you guys watching, whatever. But yeah, to sum up that album, I think it's chaotic, it's a mess. It's also really sad and really emotional. Let's just move on. Someday, I wanna... Down. Ghost Town is one of my favorite Kanye songs ever and honestly one of my favorite songs ever because knowing what Kanye went through at that time and listening to that song really just gives so much like you actually probably will cry during the nothing hurts anymore I feel kind of free I put my hand on the stove to see if I still bleed. I know the album's short, it's only like seven songs, but it's the highlight of the album in my opinion. Kanye is self-destructive and self-obsessed but he's also self-aware. So he's trying to be better. And going on the roller coaster from him at the top of his game with My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy all the way down to the end of Life of Pablo where he basically just hits rock bottom. Ye feels like it's the start of a new chapter while there's also this lingering feeling of fear that you know nothing really changed. It's like he wants to be the best version of himself but he keeps indulging in things that prevent him from doing that. And if that's not relatable, I don't know what is. It'll probably end up being on the lower end of my list just because like quality wise, it's short, it doesn't do too much. But I think it hits a really important emotional beat for Kanye in his career. Coming off the chaotic mess that was Life of Pablo, it is a nice reset. If 
feel so good it should cost. Brought an alligator, I ain't talking Lacoste. As you can see, I have a Kid See Ghost poster right here. I've liked the album for a while. You know, it's so wicked and weird, and every single turn that it takes surprises you in the best way. And you know, I'm gonna say it. The world is a better place when Kanye and Kid Cudi are making music together. I just love the way their sounds contrast each other, you know? Cudi always sounds so like bored and lifeless with his deliveries. Like, like it's very stale and stagnant. And then Kanye comes in with all this energy and it's all like perky and bouncy. Great contrast. They fit together perfectly. Between this one and his other collab album, Watch the Throne, honestly, I think I'm leaning more towards this one, even though I was slobbing on that one's knob for so long. It's just more interesting and unique, you know? Like so much of the hype to watch the throne was the high energy, you know, the power, the, the hype. The hype was the hype. But after My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, I feel like Kanye flipped this switch in his career where he stopped trying to prove himself and started trying to push his boundaries. And if I'm being honest, I prefer the later half of Kanye's career where he pushes those boundaries because it's just a lot more interesting to listen to. Here's my top five songs. If I were to give this album a rating, I don't really know. It's hard to like actually critique a lot of these albums because they make such bold choices that if there's something that sets me off, that's probably the point, right? But I really like Reborn, I like Fourth Dimension, you know, really great songs. And it's just short and sweet and fun. I'm a bad, it's on God. For those of you that don't know, Kanye West devoted his life to Christianity before making this album, hence the title. And yeah, it's basically all gospel music, which I think is a very big factor as to why a lot of people regard this as his worst album. Me personally, I'd still probably say that it is, but I feel like this album gets hate. You know, I don't think it's that bad. Maybe my listening experience was enhanced by the fact that I grew up in a Christian household. I'd imagine those who aren't Christian would probably find this album a lot harder to relate to and a lot harder to get into. But some of the beats are fun, you know. I like the choirs too, like, it's cool. Here's my top five songs, nothing crazy. It's pretty short, kind of forgettable to be honest. And now we are moving on to the last album of the discography. Oh my God, I'm so tired. Clap it up, amazing. I'm so surprised you guys made it this far. Donda is so long, bro. Oh my God. The deluxe version is like two hours and 30 minutes or some bullshit. What the fuck? And don't get me wrong. There's some bangers. It's cool. But why are there so many part twos? Well, I don't, I don't care about the baby. Bro, don't include that shit. I don't, fine, throw it on the deluxe. Why is that on the standard version of the album? Here's my top five. Um, They're all pretty much in like the first third of this album, but I swear I listened to the entire thing. And I hate to be so basic, but I feel like other than the hits, this album's kind of, eh. And it is also Christian encoded, but not as in your face with it as Jesus is King is. Hello, editor Jason here with some, some funky hair. I, I slept with product in my hair and now it looks kind of weird. Just ignore it. I just wanted to pop in because I feel like when I'm addressing Kanye's Christianity in this video, like the two times I bring it up in Jesus is King and Donda, I don't know why, like the particular delivery of the line that I wrote makes it sound like I mean it in a negative way. And obviously I don't, like I grew up in a Christian household, I'm a practicing Christian. You know, these last two albums or so are some of my least favorite Kanye albums. And I just wanted to make sure that you guys know it's not because of that. It's just a coincidence that my two least favorite albums are the two Christian ones. So yeah, uh, just covering all my bases, you know? What else did I say? Uh, the inner Interludes. The interludes with his mom, um, Donda West, you know, the album is named after her. I guess she was like a pastor or something. Um, and there's just a lot of like breaks throughout the album where she has like these speeches that are talking. Praise God, the intro, fire to the pro progress toward them. Even if you are not ready for the day, you cannot always be night. All in all, some really good moments, obviously, but I feel like it's such a slog that they kind of get lost in the rest of it, and it just, this album's not that great. I don't know, I, I'm not a big fan. In a lot of ways, Kanye West is kind of like the anti-Taylor Swift, it's both with how they attack their music careers and how they sculpt their public personas. So much of Taylor's shtick is that she's grounded and relatable, you know? And because of that, it's a lot easier for teenage girls or the occasional straight guy that just really likes good pop music to connect to their stuff. But Kanye, I feel like, is aware of the magnitude of the audience that he commands. And he kind of, I guess, lets it get to his head, but also just everything that he does separates him further from them, you know, making him more of a, a general enigma. So yeah, it's not surprising to me that they have beef and that their fandoms hate each other. I mean, they're literally polar opposites. The only thing they have in common is that they're both 
good at what they do. See, I went into this whole listening process, A, because I wanted to become more familiar with his music, because I know it's really good, but B, because I was genuinely curious how he's managed to retain such a huge audience in spite of everything that he's done. But after listening to all this stuff, and honestly just thinking about it a little more, like I'm not gonna pretend like I did all this research, I've devised a theory. Jason often likes to make he's a smart motherfucker and sometimes he will run stupid fucking mouth on the baby stupid fucking theories that he wants to do on his fucking stupid ass videos that you guys have been watching right now like one like this and you have a nice start to watch it and the loud goes to the and start with the bang. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I like to think that most of Kanye's audience shares a similar perspective to me, where they understand that Kanye's beliefs and the things that he's said and done are terrible, but the music? Kind of fire. And yeah, I think people continue to support Kanye in spite of his behavior because they know when he's done with the interviews and he's done trolling on Instagram and gets his ass in the studio, he's gonna cook up some motherfucking heat. And the problem with that is that I think Kanye knows that. So that's why he feels like he has a license to do all this outlandish stuff. Which I mean, ideally, he wouldn't have these thoughts at all. But even if he did have them, having the fear of losing your career and losing your platform would probably steer you away from bringing them up, you know? And I'm pretty sure a lot of people chalk this up to his bipolar diagnosis, but I'm just not knowledgeable enough to speak on that. So we're gonna stay a little more broad with what we're talking about because I don't want to offend anybody and also don't want to misinform anyone. I guess my point is, to summarize this whole video, the same reason that everyone hates Kanye is why everyone loves Kanye. It is his innate ability to surprise people and do the unexpected that brought him this far, and it could also end up being the death of his career, even though I don't personally realistically think he's going anywhere. And that, my friends, is the JP Kanye postulate. Here's my top 15 songs. It was really hard to make, so I'm just gonna throw all the Kanye songs that I like listening to on the playlist. That will be linked in the description. Definitely go check it out and follow me on Spotify. Here is the official album ranking. I will give you guys a moment to take a look at that. It was actually the hardest thing that I've ever done in my entire life. So please do not ridicule me if something is wrong about it. Okay, I, I did my best, I'm sorry. And I guess that's where we'll wrap this video up. Thanks for sticking around to the end and be sure to comment your favorite Kanye songs and albums as well as just your general thoughts on things that I said in this video, you know, anything you thought I missed. And yeah, subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys next week. Yeah, I ain't saying she a gold digger. But she ain't messing with no broken rope. I ain't saying she a gold digger. But she ain't messing with no broke fellas. Get down, girl, go ahead, get down. Get down, girl, go ahead, get down. Get down, girl, go ahead, get down. Get down, girl, go ahead.